Ten months after Antietam, the nation would suffer another convulsion on the killing fields of Gettysburg. The difficulty with Gettysburg was to get the nation to believe a battle of that magnitude had occurred. Three days of intense fighting, over 50,000 casualties. Gettysburg was a little town of 2,500 people. By July 4th, there were 22,000 wounded men inside the town. Ten times the number of wounded soldiers as there were citizens of the town. At Gettysburg, one reporter would face his greatest challenge. Sam Wilkinson was a reporter for the New York Times, an excellent reporter, uh, known for his, both his passion to accurately report the war and for his support of the Union cause. His son, Bayard Wilkinson, was an officer in the 4th U.S. Artillery at Gettysburg. Arriving at the front, Sam learned that Bayard had been gravely wounded, his legs shattered by a cannonball, and was now trapped behind enemy lines. His exact condition, unknown. One can only imagine the stress that, that placed him on. However, he went about compiling the information that he needed to present the New York Times readers with an account of this uh, tremendously dramatic and momentous battle. Wilkinson's activities at Gettysburg don't really go beyond reporting news. It was reporting sensations, feelings at the moment. He had no time to interpret it. He had no time to understand it. He was simply trying to convey the spectacle, the horror, the feeling of what it was like to be in battle. Every size and form of shell known to gunnery shrieked, whirled, moaned, whistled, and wrathfully fluttered over our ground. Soldiers in federal blue were torn to pieces in the road and died with the peculiar yells that blend the extorted cry of pain with horror and despair. Sam Wilkinson, the New York Times, 1861. Only after the guns fell silent would Wilkinson discover his son's fate. Bayard actually amputated his own leg with a penknife because it was just hanging by shreds. Uh, a horrible thing to contemplate. But the young man died as a prisoner in a Confederate field hospital. Uh, they simply couldn't treat him during the battle. After the battle, Wilkinson went looking for his son and he found his son's body in a grave. Headquarters of the Potomac, Saturday night, July 4, 1863. Who can write the history of a battle whose eyes are immovably fastened upon a central figure of transcendingly important interest, the dead body of an oldest born? Oh, you dead who at Gettysburg have baptized with your blood the second birth of freedom in America, how you are to be envied. I rise from a grave whose wet clay I have passionately kissed, and I look up and see Christ spanning this battlefield and reaching paternally and lovingly up to heaven. His right hand opens the gates of paradise. With his left, he beckons these mutilated bloody, swollen forms to ascend.